Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pracharine Nirvase Sasunya Vadi Astyatya De Satarine Vachakalpa De Rubis Chakripa Sindhu Veva Chapatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Maha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadat Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Vata Rindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, yeah. You have to remove that uh, block. Yeah. Okay, it's back again. That block. Is this gone, Guru Maharaj? No, it's it's still there. It's covering the verse. I think Mother Lavanya knows. She did it yesterday. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Um, I think uh, your Zoom controls are coming on the way. Uh, can you just uh, move them on the top or the bottom? Mm -hmm. oh, is this better or is this still coming Sorry. yeah it's in um we'll see but, um, i think it's blocking the purport now um, yeah i will move that mataji once it comes to purport so. okay sure thank you very much Translation: Others who are as intelligent, others who are as intelligent as King Prithu, also took to the essence out of the earth planet. Indeed, everyone took this opportunity to follow in the footsteps of King Prithu and get whatever he desired from the planet Earth, purport by Shri Prabhupada. The planet Earth is also called Vasudhara, Vas Vasundhara. The word Vasu means wealth and Dara means one who holds. All creatures within the Earth fulfill the necessities required for human beings and all living beings can be taken out of the Earth by the proper means. Suggested by the planet Earth and accepted, initiated by King Prithu, whatever is taken from the Earth, either from mines, from the surface of the globe, or from the atmosphere, should always be considered the property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and should be used for sacrifice, yagya, Lord Vishnu. As soon as the process of yagya is stopped, the Earth will hold all productions, vegetables, trees, plants, fruits, flowers, and other agricultural products and minerals. As confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, the process of yoga was instituted by, from the beginning of creation. By the re regular performance of yoga, the equal distribution of wealth, and the restriction of sense gratification, the entire world will be made peaceful and prosperous. prosperous. As already mentioned, in this age of Kali, the simple performance of Sankirtan Yagya, the holding of festivals as initiated by the International Society for Krishna Conscious, should be introduced in every town and village. Every intelligent man should encourage the performance of Sankirtan Yagya by their personal behavior. This means they should follow the process of austerity by restricting themselves from illicit sex life, meat eating, gambling, and intoxication. If the intelligent men of the, Burma, the Brahmins of society would follow the rules and regulations, certainly the entire face of this present world, which is in such 
chaotic condition would change and people would be happy and prosperous. Jila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, yeah, don't move things. Keep it right where it is. Uh, and so Prabhupada ends the purport in saying that the present condition of the world is chaotic. So that was written 50 years ago, almost. Now we might say the chaos has continued <laughs> and there is more dissatisfaction, more uh, uncertainty. There's a lot of difficulties in the world today. And uh, what you read in the newspapers is not what's happening in the world. <laughs> what's happening is being kept quiet behind the scenes in order to keep it out of the public eye. Domestic violence has increased hundreds of percent around the world, especially in America. Uh, business are so folding, people are desperate. So because people are sinful, because there is no yagya. Planet Earth is mother, and she is called mother because she provides all the necessities for the children, us the living entities, not only including humans, but for all life. <laughs> and she works under the directions of the Supreme Lord. She is the property of the Lord, and she is controlled by the Lord. But if she's miscontrolled, just like if you disobey your mother, she slaps you, <laughs> or she punishes you, or does something to restrict you, which is very, which is unpleasant, which is a form of correction, chastisement. So the same analogy is there. We have Father Krishna, we have Mother Earth, and we have us, the children, the living entities who live on the earth and depend on the earth to live we actually we live we depend on the earth to live without air we can't live we may have nice lungs to to breathe air but if there's no air to breathe if the air is bad we can't breathe much what is good what will what will good your lungs do you do if the object of what you're breathing is either harmful or not available we need food, and food comes from the earth. <laughs> Fruits come from the earth, vegetables come from the earth, grains come from the earth. Uh, milk ultimately comes from the earth because the cows produce milk, and where do they get their nourishment? They get their nourishment from the earth. So everything is coming from Mother Earth. That's why her name is Mother. She is one of the seven mothers. We have seven mothers. It's mentioned in the Vedas and Mother Earth. And our real mother and uh, mother cow are the three prominent ones, which are outstanding in the category of mothers. <laughs> um, mother is considered be, to be uh, second in importance. God is first and uh, mother is second because without mother, there is no life. Without mother, there is no, uh, what we say, nourishment. People are not nourished. <laughs> and so therefore, we have what we have today. And, uh, and here Prabhupada gives the formula. Um, of course, uh, the formula is Sankirtan Yagya, or Harinam Sankirtan, holding festivals and chanting uh, Harinam in, the, in every street corners of the globe when Prabhupada first started the movement, what did he do? He organized Sankirtan everywhere. In fact, he started Sankirtan himself. When he came to New York City in 1965, a little bit later, he was out in the park with a little drum and with his fledging disciples who knew nothing about Krishna consciousness. The only thing they knew was that Prabhupada was an interesting and most um, uh, wonderful person. And they liked what they had to say. They liked him as a person, so they followed him. But they didn't know much. Gradually, things came to the forefront as devotees started to practice. But Prabhupada was the first to hold public sankirtan. And 
if you go back and ins inspect the early Bhaktiv Gathead magazines from the initiation, when they were first published in the beginning of our society, you'll find every one of those magazines is profuse with uh, pictures of devotees doing sankirtan in different places all around the world. I mean, as the, as the movement was spreading, and first from America, and then to London, and then to other different places in Europe. So gradually, gradually, but it was all based on Harinam Sankirtan. So that is the Yagya in this age, okay? to chant the holy names of the Lord in congregation. And these are done in public display, so the, it will benefit not only the people, but it will benefit the whole atmosphere. The whole atmosphere becomes what we say, uh, spiritualized wherever there is the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And so that is the yagya in this age. Yagyai sankirtanai prayaya janti hi sumeda saha. Otherwise, we have what we have today is the general common process is to exploit the earth for whatever you can get from the earth, thinking that it's just there. It's some dead dead being that's that has so many things in it how can the earth be dead when it's given so much life to everyone else it's just contradictory it's not it's not some inanimate object it is a living entity who is uh, manifested as mother earth who provides all the necessities and more of life like that otherwise there's no life just imagine if there was no sun, there would be nothing. So not even the earth, but the, even if you have the earth and you have no sun, <laughs> you have no life. Because the sun it nourishes everything, it gives light, it gives heat. Otherwise, the earth is just a, uh, it's just a, uh, yeah. It's there, everything is there, but it's in its dormant stage and cannot be taken out unless it's nourished by water and by sunlight. These two things bring everything to the uh, availability of the living entities. So sacrifice has to be there. And of course, in this age, the sacrifice is Harinam Sankirtan. And so how important it is for this process to go on. And here it says the, the earth is also called Vasundara. Sundara means well, one who holds all wealth. Yeah. So people who are rich today, where do they get their wealth from? From the earth. They take gold out of the earth. They take they go they go to South Africa and exploit diamond mines there, or they go to other places in the world. They go deep into the ocean to find pearls and so gems coming from different places in mountainous areas. So all the precious metals are locked within the earth in different places. And this is valuable. These things are actually real wealth. This stuff we have called money, this paper stuff, they put some picture of somebody who appears to be important within a particular country who did something that nobody knows. We look at the money, we say, what, whose face is this? We don't know. And what did he do? Well, nobody knows, but they kind of like him. So they put him on the, on the thing. Or if he did something 300 years ago, it's not important now. And so this is, uh, and they make a piece of paper. They say, here, you work so hard. You gave so much of your time and energy. Here's this nice piece of paper for you. They use it in the most you know, beneficial way. But it's only paper, it's all it is. <laughs> it's not wealth. Wealth is land and precious metals and livestock. This is wealth. To have cows, to have land, to have precious metals, then you have wealth. Otherwise, this piece is a paper. If the government decides, well, just like they did in India a few years ago. I, I'm a, yeah, it was in the year 2000, 
2017, and I think it was at the end of 2016 and the beginning of 2017, the government decided to withdraw some of the, the notes in India, some of the rupee notes. And uh, if you didn't turn in your rupee notes at a certain time, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get anything in exchange. And um, the reason they did that is to get rid of all the black money that was people were having, people were printing their own money. And so they could not exchange that. So people who had all this money and people who were using this money and not even aware of it lost everything. They were burning money in the streets. We, we even see that when we were in, in India. So I was there at the time when that was happening. So it's just paper. And it just depends on how what the government wants to do. If the government wants to, if the government folds, then all your money is just is nothing, is zero. You have absolutely zero. And now they have a plan to actually withdraw paper money from society and make everything digital. That's the upcoming plan of the of the plan makers is to now you you make you go to work and you have in a bank account or you have in a debit account and then you get a number put on your account and then you have a card every time you spend something they subtract it from that number and when you put something in the number goes up and that's how you live with a piece of plastic and a number that will be that's the future coming out so yeah so this wealth that the earth has is real wealth and not this stuff that they have today in society. So you see, even in the history of the world, how the earth had to withhold its bounty because of people becoming so sinful. Only by the appearance of a saintly person did things change. And gradually people started to become prosperous, prosperous again, because the world of the earth started to receive yagya or sacrifice like that. So, and that was due to the appearance of the saintly king and King Pritu. So we also have the appearance of great saints like Srila Prabhupada who appeared in the world and started Harinam Sankirtan all around the world, which is the means for, uh, for pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead in this age. This is what pleases the Lord. And when the Lord is pleased, then not all, just like it says, when it rains, it rains on the agricultural fields. It rains on the rocks. It rains on the oceans. The rain goes everywhere. So it'll come to areas which are needed and it'll come to areas which are not needed. So the rain is doesn't make a discrimination. So when the Lord is pleased, everyone benefits. Even the, even the sinful people benefit although they don't know it. <laughs> so this Sankirtan Yagya is the means in this age. So go on to the next verse. We'll read verse number 14. Rasayo duduhur divam indri yesyarta satama vatsam brihaspatim kridva pasya chando mayam suchi. All the great sages transformed the Vaspati into a calf and making the senses into a pot, they milked all kinds of Vedic knowledge to purify mind and hearing. So here, the earth is not only going to provide uh, yeah, gross necessities, but here we'll see. Vrihaspati is the priest of the heavenly planets. Vedic knowledge was received in logical order by the great Vrihaspati for the benefit of human society, not only on this planet, but throughout the universe. In other words, somebody, uh, somebody's uh, microphone is open, is open there. In other words, Vedic knowledge is considered one of the necessities for human society. So here's another necessity, Vedic knowledge. If human society remains satisfied, Simply by taking grains from the planet Earth, as well as other necessities for maintaining the body, society will not be sufficiently prosperous. 
humanity must have food for the mind and ear as well for the purpose of vibration. As far as transcendental vibrations are concerned, the essence of all Vedic knowledge is the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In Kali Yuga, this Vedic Maha Mantra is chanted regularly and heard regularly by the devotional process of Shravanam and Kirtanam. It will purify all societies and thus humanity will be happy both materially and spiritually. Hmm. So Prabhupada includes this, that, that, that happiness materially, what, that, what is designated as material happiness will also be automatically uh, manifested within the, within the earth's atmosphere when people take to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Because Hare Krishna Maha Mantra includes everything, both spiritual and material. It is Krishna manifested himself in the form of transcendental vibration. And so this is Goloka Premadan Harinam Shankirtan Ratin Jan Milo Kena Upai. This is coming from the spiritual world down to the material world. It's for the this is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Because the essence of all Vedic knowledge, as mentioned in the Bhagavatam itself and spoken by Krishna himself, is to, to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the easiest and most recommended way in this age is chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So we can feed the body and take care of the physical needs of the body through food and water and other such things. But then there is still an insufficient nourishment. The mind, the heart has to be nourished by the transcendental vibration of the holy names of the Lord. I was listening to Srila Prabhupada today speaking about mantras. And he was speaking about how mantras, when chanted properly, have a very powerful effect. And he was talking about material mantras. For instance, there are people who are snake charmers and they know mantras, how, how to charm snakes, where snakes become, what we say, uh, harmless. They don't harm anybody. Even if they have poison, even if they have their teeth, when they're charmed nicely through mantra, they become very obedient to the person who is chanting those mantras. And they're called snake charmers. Prabhupada tells one story where there was one big building and there were some medical doctors, some medical students there. Now there was some cases of snake bites. So they decided to call in the snake charmer to get rid of the snakes. So he came and then he extracted the snakes out by the mantra. Some of the students were curious and a little skeptical. How is it possible that one can do this? So they approached the snake charmer, who was a simple, simple Muslim man. And they, uh, they were questioning how, how you did this. And then they said, well, probably these snakes, they don't, didn't have any poison in them. And they were already, uh, you know, pacified. He said, no. They have everything. So what he did, just to convince them, he had a whole basket full of snakes that were with him. So he let all the snakes out. <laughs> and they were running all over the courtyard. And all of the students were getting nervous and running this way and that way, trying to get away from the snakes. He said, don't worry, they won't harm you as long as I'm here. And so and then he chanted his mantras. And all the snakes again came back to the basket where he was. So this is the power of mantra. Uh, Prabhupada said also that in the Vedic society, when they were fighting the different battles, they would use mantras, sound vibrations, to release the weapons. And the weapons were so exact in their uh, accuracy that by chanting a mantra and aiming at a particular enemy, that that 
that that uh, weapon would go exact exactly to where that place was. In other words, through sound vibration, they could direct direct the weapon to their 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 object. And of course, yogis they simply chant mantras. These are powerful yogis, and they can fly through the air. <laughs> They can fly through the air on a broomstick. They can fly through the air on a carpet. They can fly through the air on anything. Just one piece of, all they do is just have something to hold on to. And then they just chant mantras. So mantra is very powerful. And these are material mantras. What to speak of the spiritual mantras. Therefore, if we can chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra without offense, imagine how powerful that is. There's no, there's no imagination attached to it because it is so powerful. It's directly Krishna himself in sound. And so therefore, one is completely protected, completely on all levels if they chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra without offense. So we have to come to that stage of chanting free from offenses. And then the power of the mantra works in such a way as it awakens our relationship with Krishna directly. And the, the effects of the mantra are, you know, all pervading. Just like you are, you're there and you want to do something, you can't remember what you want to do. You say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and then you remember what you're supposed to do. You walk along the floor and you you trip on something, you hurt your foot and you start chanting and all of a sudden the pain goes away. Prabhupada labeled one particular uh, lecture. He said, chanting relieves pain. It does. <laughs> For those who are absorbed in chanting, there is no physical pain, depending how deep you can chant. But this is, this is the power of mantra. So even material mantras, as we gave the examples, are very powerful and can move and do wonderful things on the material level. What to speak of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is, the, which is called the Maha Mantra, the source of all mantras. So if we spread the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra everywhere, then there's nothing, there's no, no other, other formula needed in order to uplift the human society. Everything will happen automatically by the mercy of the Lord. And everything will be provided and people will be happy. And as Prabhupada said, materially and spiritually happy, along with the prosperity that comes from uh, the Lord's mercy. Okay, so these are a couple of quick verses about the glories of the earth as she reveals her mercy. And everything in these two verses centered around the, the yagya of this age. Therefore, we should never minimize in any way the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. It is the most important and the most powerful of all spiritual practices. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, for this wonderful class today and especially like this whole series on Mother Earth. Uh, this is really, really important, especially in this current situation where people are just like blaming each other, what's happening and the uh, importance of this Sankirtan Yagya is so important and austerity like four liberty principle and value of this spiritual sound vibration of Mahamantra. So thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions or any comment or realization, please unmute yourself. And uh, if you would like me to read your questions, you can type this in chat window. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Sorry if my computer is making noise. It's just, it's an old computer. So it, it does that. Is that causing a disturbance? No, Guru Maharaj, I think we are all used to, and we were more concerned about you that it's something like, but 
hopefully it's not uh, disturbing you so it should be okay no it's it's the computer it turns on the fan automatically in order for it to clean the inside it comes on automatically goes off automatically so i can't really do anything with it except to get another computer <laughs> that's all now it stopped yes So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, you can unmute yourself in case you are speaking on mute. Looks like there's no questions. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Jesus. Thank you again for reminding us about the importance and the power of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. We need to be, personally speaking, we, I need this uh, reminder because uh, our focus always is outward. We tend to focus book distribution or you know, doing this or doing that and, you know, it's all uh, focused on activity in Krishna consciousness. But somehow, Japa seems to be relegated to the background or not a lower down on the list of priorities. I, I would like to know how to make it actually the topmost of all our spiritual practices. Well, that's a matter of just making and prioritizing it. And prioritizing it means to start off by scheduling it. The more you chant, the more you develop a taste for chanting. Once you develop a taste, then it's not a matter of scheduling anymore. You always look forward to chanting. But we have to uh, schedule our, our 16 rounds in, in the earliest part of the day. That's the foundation for building our chanting. Therefore, I recommend devotees to chant early because it set, it developed. Even if it's difficult, don't, don't worry, just chant it early because it'll give you an, a foundation for everything. And once you practice that, you'll develop a taste for it. We want to get that taste, and that taste comes by taste comes by chanting. Mm -hmm. And avoiding the offenses. So how can we actually get this taste? Because personally I just chant, 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 but somehow I don't I haven't developed really taste for chanting. I just do it because I need to do it. I don't know that I have any taste for chanting. Well, you have to, you have to beg for it. Mm. You, have to, you have to chant in the mood of, in the mood of uh, helplessness. Mm. And we, and we have to come to the stage that when we're chanting, we develop this connection with the holy name and then it can be, there's nothing else and it's just you and the holy name. You're chanting the holy name and the holy name is bringing you in at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes just you and the holy name. So work on that. It requires focus, it requires determination, it requires prayer requires practice. Well, getting there is just as, just as much enjoyable as arriving. Because if you're chanting, you're connected with Krishna. 
even if the quality of the chanting is not so great if you if you're sincerely trying yes the quality should be done with the quality of the devotion and the quality of the expression both support each other hearing the sound clearly and and pronouncing the sound clearly pronouncing the sound proceeds hearing the sound clearly mm. and you know that mind will wander chanchala himana krishna when pramati balabhadra arjuna says the mind's going to wander it's like the wind it's strong you're asking me to control the mind, though, Krishna. I think it's like controlling the wind. Krishna said, "Yes, that's true, but practice." <laughs> right. Right. Practice and det detach yourself from material activities. Mm -hmm. The blocks. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I'll, I'll try my level best to work on those things which you mentioned. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate the help. Yeah. Record your chanting and play it back and see how it sounds. Record the chanting and then play it back to see where where the whether the sound is coming through clearly and where the mistakes are happening? Yeah, just evaluate your own chanting. Just, you know, record your chanting and then play it back and then see how it sounds. Mm. And then you can tell where you need to improve just by hearing it. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. This is a... Yeah, it's, a it's a good method, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, can I request you to speak something on Pankaj Giri Prabhu today? Um, I'm going to give a whole presentation upcoming, maybe on either Friday or Saturday of this week on Pankaj Thank you. Uh, Thank I, you just, Guru Maharaj. I just wanted to mention, yeah, that uh, Rodi's. Uh, uh, there's a, we can learn a lot from the life of Pankajangri and how what he did and how important he how de, how dedicated he was in practicing his Krishna consciousness and how advanced he was by his dedication thank you Guru Maharaj thank you yeah I'm gonna I think I will it won't be tomorrow, but it may be Thursday we have the program with the uh, and then uh, Friday is Ekadasi, so I might do it on, on Friday or I might do it on Saturday, either one. Friday or Saturday I hope to present. I want to get enough information ready to make the presentation. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. Ji Dandavat Pranam, Pranam to all devotees, Hare Krishna. Manisha. So I don't have a question. I just wanted to share one thing that um, when I was a young child and my American education, uh, in my biology textbooks, it was always written that there is no such thing which can regenerate 
the dead brain cells. So once a part of the brain is dead, it cannot be regenerated. Then later on, um, at, as my education continued, um, they had to update the textbooks and they said that brain cells cannot be regenerated except for one process that has been proved scientifically, which is meditation. Through meditation, like chanting uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the brain cells can actually be regenerated. So like for patients that have certain diseases where by surgery, a part of their brain is removed or they had some kind of accident where a part of their brain was damaged. Uh, the only thing that has been found uh, scientifically that can regenerate the brain cells is meditation. And uh, also so many scientific uh, studies have been proven now that by uh, chanting Maha Mantra, like um, meditation chanting, um, so many diseases that couldn't be cured uh, by medical science are cured and they still don't know how it happens. But it's something about that they're researching still the vibrations, like the sound frequency, which, um, shakes the cells at a certain level which causes them to regenerate so i find that very interesting and also the other point that you mentioned about uh you know back in like mahabharat times that you know rishi munis and uh you know warriors they could just say a mantra and a special weapon would like appear in their hand you know uh i find when i was little girl i used to think like you know oh what is this you know <laughs> but now that i know i say wow it's so true and the technology that they're trying to develop today with military science it's trying to mirror that but at a very 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 minute level so i just think like i always have these conversations with others that you know if you really believe like uh through you know like they say true saints they have unlocked 100 percent of their brain capacity most of us only are functioning with a small using small part of our brain but like true saints they have uh, they're using 100% of their brain. So they can surpass, they can transgress like time, place, all those things. So, you know, like the, the special powers like anima, garima, like they get, like you can be sitting here and then you can travel to another planet and you, you can come back. Like all those things were there, you know, at, at like those times, like uh, Lord Krishna's time, Lord Ram's time. But now because of Kalyug, uh, you know, we're all dull witted, so we've lost all that uh, Vedic science. So, thank you very yeah. much for sharing today. They all, yeah, everything today is gross. They don't know much about the subtle sciences. Sciences. But Prabhupada said, you know, the gross, and then you have the mind. And then above the mind, there's the intelligence, and then above the intelligence is the soul. So they don't, they can't even tap into the, they, they tap a little bit into the mind, the mind area, but not much. The intelligent area is even more subtle. And the spiritual area, they're oblivious to. Because they're using every, they're only using gross forms of experimentation and you know, observation. Everything is done on a physical level. If they just take the science that is there in the Vedas, but they're prejudiced. They won't take it because of prejudice, or they think it's just some. You know, they won't acknowledge that all the advancement of society was already founded millions of years ago. But it wasn't like all this gross stuff. You know? <laughs> okay, thank you, Manisha. That was nice. Good point. Yes, I always love Srila Prabhupada's uh, talks about how they're trying to artificially create spaceships to get to the moon. But, you know, I always tell uh, people that are, you know, not necessarily, they don't know anything about Krishna consciousness. I said, actually, you don't need a spaceship. You can do it with your own body. You just have to reach to that level, you know. So thank you. <laughs> thank you.
So, Guru Maharaj, we don't have any questions or any things on chat. We'll wait for some. Hare Krishna. Oh. Yes, Mother, yeah. please go ahead. Yes. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and to your holiness, dear Chandramali Swami. Um, I, you know, you were talking about the power of yagya, and it's interesting. There was um, this one person who was coming to the, the, the Chicago temple for quite some time, and I thought was definitely a devotee, and then suddenly disappeared and then came back and said, well, you know, I'm, uh, have you ever tried uh, witchcraft? Okay. And this person was talking to me about that. And I said, so what's the big deal about that? Well, she, uh, this person said, because it works. And because I get all the things I want. And of course, I explained that you're you're not going to, that looks very temporary. And not only that, you're, you're probably going to have a problem in the future. You're going to be trapped because these are demonic people that will, um, they will fool you. And, uh, but the, the point is these yagyas that, that this person was talking about, they're not for this age, but there are a lot of people out there that don't, you know, that are performing yagyas, but not for the good, like we are doing in Krishna consciousness. Um, people, are, there are people out there, I'm sure, levitating and doing all of those types of things. But there are also these other people doing this kind of thing. And I've had several, I used to answer the phone a lot, and people would call up and talk about these demonic things. They don't think they're demonic, but they are. And, um, and I said, you know, this is very temporary. So they even, don't they, uh, the point is, do, don't they even work today in such um, a, a degraded stage I mean, I would think um, that they wouldn't work today because the, the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is what really works today. Yeah, and, well, they're, they're, they're just playing with the material energy. That's all. Mm. The Maha Mantra is completely spiritual. It's above all that. They're playing within the three modes of material nature, mostly in the mode of ignorance. It's just very tamasic. It's called, it's called uh, left-hand tantric. There's right hand tantric and left hand tantric. Oh. Right hand tantric is actually purifying, it can be helpful, but left hand tantric is all evil. And it's meant for exploiting others mostly, controlling others. So there are people who like to play around like that. Just like, you know, there's people who like to attack other people through these different processes. I know many devotees who are being attacked by these subtle energies for different reasons. They uh, hire these people in the mode of these tam tamasic uh, people, and these are tantric people, just to break their will in Krishna consciousness. But they can't do it because the devotees are chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and when they, because of that, they're protected. Uh, I know a few people, I even have one disciple that went through it, and she somehow or other came out of it and was able to break through by the mercy of Lord Nishringadev. But some of them are powerful materially and some of them are not so powerful materially, but it depends if when you take shelter of Krishna's holy name seriously, then you can, you'll see that uh, there's a fight going on and they're trying to destroy you. You know, Radhana Swami in his book, The Journey Home, when he was talking about traveling, he met one man who um, he was chanting Ram's name constantly, in Lord Ramachandra's name. He said, if I stop chanting, I'm dead. There's, some, there's, there's these people who are trying to kill me with subtle weapons. Mm. And it's the only thing that's keeping me alive is this the chanting of Ram's name like that. Yeah. So there's things on the subtle platform, which some of the demons, they know how to use like that. Some just, of the demons it, yeah. stick to the race. So there's, there's a whole set of, uh, of, you know, of this going on on different levels. Yeah. There's two I kinds can't of understand it. About, Yeah, I can't understand why they wouldn't want to go to something that's for, you know, that's eternal and something that's going to bring them good. It, it, 
just doesn't compute to me. I, I don't understand because uh, I run into more than one person. Like Agu Tom explains there are people in the modes of ignorance and they're Thomistic and they're, they're influenced by demoniac energies. That's all. Okay. Yeah. As long as you, you have the material energy, you'll have these demons, <laughs> people who are evil, control mongers. They want to control everybody. They want to get as much as they can. They enjoy, their enjoyment is to control people. <laughs> and, you know, so that, um, anything that's in the mode of goodness, for instance, we know that the Maha Mantra is, is the way, the, on, the real way to go back home uh, to Godhead and the only way. And, uh, but there are other people who say, well, you know, I have, I have uh, my Lord and I pray to him and he's not Krishna. And uh, is there some validity to um, other, you know, people who are praying in the mode of goodness, but not praying to the, uh, to, to the Lord Krishna? Well, there's only one Lord. If they're, if they're not playing, praying to the Supreme Lord, then they're praying to, you know, demigods or someone in between. But God is one. They, they can call him whatever they want to call him, but he's, he has different names. His names are many, but he is one. There's only one Supreme Personality of Godhead. We call him Krishna. People call him other names. I guess that's what I'll use then when I'm uh, when I'm speaking to people like this, because they say to me, "Well, they know there's only one way." You know, you get the you do get these um, born again Christians, and they're like really difficult um, to talk uh, to. Yeah, because they have no no knowledge. Knowledge means to understand that there's one God, and we are all. Uh, parts and parcel of that one supreme word. You could call them by different names. Even even an ordinary person has more than one name. But God is unlimited, so He has different names also. It's just they just think that the name I'm saying Krishna and you're saying another name. That means there's two different gods. No, that's foolish. It's, it's not true. Only okay. one word. One supreme word. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, uh, Vivek, I think we can end here. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And tomorrow we'll continue with the series that is coming up with these verses. It'll be in the same chapter, chapter 13, or chapter 18, I'm sorry. And uh, we we have done chat verses thirteen and fourteen today, so we'll go on and, and do some of the future verses. Um, I'm not sure which verse will be tomorrow, but we'll decide before then. It'll, it'll be the 18th chapter. Sure, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj, for your valuable time and association. Thank you. Also, thanks, devotee, hey. for joining this session. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Gurudev ki jai, Anant Koti Vaishnav Vrind ki jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you.